What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. So last video we got my new Flower Horns tank set up. Got him back in the tank. He's doing well. So is the tank. This was the tank that he was staying in. The bow front tank. And as you can tell I've got everything back into place. And the blue cards are now back in here. Loving their tank. This one's actually super active. And when I put the Flower Horn in here he uh, decided that he wanted to kind of remodel the tank. So everything is back organized nice and neat now. It looks great. I got the big piece of driftwood back in there. And obviously the fish are now back in there. At least the two that were in there before I had to move them out of there. So today what we're going to do, we're going to add more fish to this tank. Not all the fish that will end up completing the tank, but a few more. And it is these guys right here, the Buenos Aires Tetris. I think there's like five or six of them in here. We've got a few of the regular kind and then a few of the albinos. And uh, these guys are a cool looking fish. They are, especially in a bigger school, but they are a complete menace. They are about the closest thing you can get to being a barb. Honestly, I'm surprised they're not just a barb, but they are a tetra, but they seem to nip up any plants. If you guys remember all the jungle value you used to have in here, I had to take it out because they kept shredding it down. They leave the Anubias alone because it's a really hard leaf plant, but they hog up all the food from the cichlids that are in here, and they're, they're just a menace. They want to chase stuff around, so uh, we're going to get them all out of this tank today. And another thing in this tank, they're going to have a little bit more room, so uh, they'll definitely like that. Got my net and my Ziploc bag, so uh, we're going to go and net these guys out of here. So, there they all are. We got three of the regular kind and then two of the albinos. These water temps are very similar. If anything, this water might be a little bit warmer, but uh, we're still going to let them acclimate for a few minutes. And these guys, they're going to look good in here. And these are an Amazonian fish, obviously Buenos Aires that is in South America. Uh, and th this kind of theme kind of matches what they're used to with the darker theme, not very bright light, the driftwood and all that. So, uh, they should do really well in here. Here's the 55 gallon cichlid tank. Uh, everybody's doing well. The electric blue jack Dempsey's look nice. Peacocks, the Frontosas, Leparinus, and the Cynodonis Catch, which are chilling out over there right now. Just did a water change on this tank yesterday, and I get a lot of comments about this tank in particular, about how much maintenance I do on it because it seems to. It seems to always look even better on camera for some reason. But all that I do is about a 10 gallon water change, so about 20% every two weeks. I wipe down the sides, siphon it out, about five gallons here, five gallons here. I do a lot more work over on this side of the tank because a lot of wood chips from the mangrove roots seem to kind of collect on the sand over here. You can see some already on the bottom of the sand just now the next day. And that pretty well keeps this tank looking really nice. Now as for filtration, obviously I have two hang on the back uh, dual action filters. That's a 350, that's a 400. And I also do have a little 1200 gallon power um, power head in there just to give a little bit more flow. But I don't do much of these filters at all. I don't change them very often. I might change them every two or three months, something like that. And, I, and at that, I'll still only do like half at a time. So obviously there's four uh, pads in each filter, two on each side of them. And what I might do is take like two out of one filter and two out of the other and then wait till another water change or two later and then change the other half of the filters. But in between changing them before I actually do change them out because you don't need to uh, very often, once I've gotten the water drained out into one of the buckets, I'll take out uh, some of the filters maybe out of this filter and, and then just shake them off in the tank's water. All right, so not like in the aquarium, but like the water that I've siphoned out of the tank, I'll take the filters out and then shake them off in the bucket, put them back in there, and the next time I mess with them, I'll probably change them out. Quick little update on the 20-gallon long planted tank. It is looking really, really nice. Uh, the cardinals are looking great. Still have not come across any nice-looking ones of these to add to the tank because obviously we need more than two of them in here. Uh, there's one of the pee puffers out and about. We've got three of these guys in here. And besides the Cardinals getting a few more of those, there is still one more fish I want to get for the tank. Uh, three of them in particular, and that is Pandagora. Uh, that's just the type of algae eater that I've been wanting to get for this tank. This tank doesn't grow a ton of algae, but it definitely grows some, and it's enough to have some type of an algae eater in here. And I think a little uh, group of some Pandagora would do really nice in a tank like this. Now, up until this point, as you guys know, the plants have done really, really well, especially the Cryptocorn out here in the front. Uh, but so has this hygrophilia patch, uh, the micro sort, and the valisneria in the back. And obviously I don't have any CO2 running to this tank. I don't dose this tank with anything. Uh, I don't really even have a very high-end light at all. 
uh, just a decent light and eco-complete substrate and obviously that does the job for this tank this is about the bare minimum for a good looking planted tank but I am thinking about trying out some Kimi Pure Green in this tank. I've heard a lot of good things about it online and from customers at the store that I work at. So I'm thinking about trying a little round of it in this tank and uh, just seeing what it does for the plants. Like I said, they've all done well up until this point, especially the Cryptocorn. It's done the most growth out of any of the plants in here. Uh, but I just want to see what, what it would do to the tank, like how the plants would react to it and if... Uh, I would notice a difference in the plant growth. So uh, I'm thinking about trying some of that. I've never tried it before, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. So if you guys have any experience with it, then uh, you can let me know down below in the comments what you thought about it. All right, so a lot has went on with one of the ponds outside, the 300-gallon pond in particular. But first off, here is the 800-gallon pond, and you might notice the water looks a little bit more flat than usual. By the way, you can see the water lettuce has taken off even more since the last time you guys saw it. But it looks pretty flat. That's because I had to take out the circulation pump that usually sits right there and blows water this way. So in opposite direction from the return pump. And I had to use it on this pond right here. And as you can tell, it is as green as a gourd. I mean, this thing is super, super dark green. The fish are fine. Uh, ever since I added this in here, it actually gets a lot more flow now. And it has made the fish a lot more active. That's actually the lowest setting. And you can see just how much water... Uh, it puts out. I usually have it on the second highest setting in that pond. But yeah, I mean, look how active they are. I mean, they look really, really nice. Now, I will say one good thing about this green water, besides it not looking nice, is it has made the turtles more active. Uh, it's just made them a lot more comfortable, and they have started to come out a lot more. But anyways, what I was going to say is that uh, the main filter that used to run this pond with the UV light in it obviously went out. There's another one of the turtles coming up over there. And obviously when, once the water starts to cur turn green, that kind of lets you know that the UV light is out. No big deal. You take the filter out, put a new bulb in it, get it back in, th in there, and the water clears back up in a couple of days. So I took it out, got a new bulb for it, didn't think anything of it, and I went to put the bulb in. And then I saw to where, I should have taken a picture of it, but I saw where the fixture on the filter was broken. And that filter is one of those all-in-one filters. It's a great filter. It did a nice job on that pond and the previous pond I had it on, but this is the problem with a lot of those all-in-one filters. This is it right here, actually, here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift this up real quick. And I wanna be clear that not all of these are like this, but um, check this out. This is your main pump right here, and this is your UV sterilizer. Now, you'll notice there's only one cord. That's because your UV sterilizer runs straight to your pump, your electrical cord. So I couldn't just use the pump for it just to circulate the water until I got a whole new filter because it, it was hooked up to the UV sterilizer and that's not a good combo without a bulb in it. So anyways, long story short, I've got a new filter on the way. It'll be here probably tomorrow. For now, the fish are fine and I'll get the new filter in there with the UV sterilizer and it should clear up in uh, probably two or three days or so. But yeah, fish are doing fine. There's the big peacock, large mouth. Oscar's over there. I think the small peacock's over there. Uh, bullheads up underneath there. I've been actually hand feeding that guy. And here is the newest addition to the pond. The gar, which is right down there. All right, well, it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna head back inside. Our Buenos Aires Tetris should be pretty well acclimated now, so I'm gonna get them out of the bag and into the tank. All right, here we go, here we go. All five going in at once, and there they go. Cars are already checking them out. Probably not gonna like them coming in here, honestly, being that they've been in here by themselves for a good week now. Oh yeah, look at that. But they were just in them, they were just with them not too long ago over there in the hexagon tank, so, uh they should get used to them just fine. They're actually about the same size. So now that we kind of have our schooling fish in this tank and we have the cars in here, obviously, there is still a, a few more things I want to get for the tank. Two main fish in particular. Not going to tell you guys what they are just yet, but it will match this theme and it's something that will do well in here. And one of the fish is something that used to be in this tank. So that'll be pretty cool when I do end up getting those fish. Uh, I won't get them at the same time, I don't think, and I don't know which one I'm going to get first, but uh, they'll be really really cool fish in that tank and like i said should do well also as i mentioned earlier if you guys have any uh, experience with that kimmy pure green let me know down below in the comments what you thought of it and uh, if you have any suggestions as to how to use it or anything i should be aware of and i think that's pretty much it for now so if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give a like down below hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel and with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next video peace